Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman. And I'm the captain. Today we've got Atomic Amps, beautiful product. Ooh, Amplifier. Well, I, I, I owe Rob a, a, a big thank you on this one and possibly a, a sandwich and a, a half a glass you of You must milk. have bought me more sandwiches um, than I could ever count. Because after uh, Rob's excellent demo of the Atomic Amplifier, uh, I phoned uh, the chaps at Atomic, the lovely Tom King, and said, look man, please let me sell this product in the UK because it's just fantastic. Uh, and anyway, so long and the short of it is, uh, a deal was done uh, after much haggling. Um, and yeah, we're proud to say that the Andertons are gonna be selling the Atomic Amplifier uh, in the UK now. So, or in U UK and Europe. You know what I like um, about the Atomic Amplifier? What's that? Powered by Studio Devil. What I like about it is mm. that it's this little tiny red box and it kind of looks like you know, you'd be forgiven for thinking it looks like oh, it's just another one of those, you know, preamp modeling yeah. guitar amp. But then if you actually listen to it and actually plug in yeah. and start playing around, the sounds are bat crazy good. Well, there's a reason for that. So this is a this is a a, a guitar effects unit with amp modeling. So first and foremost, it's kind of it's not what the Kemper does, which is the profiling thing, but it is what uh, the sort of axe effects and the helix and all that kind of stuff. It's a it's a modeling unit. It's price, and we might as well start with the price. It's price in the UK is about 460 pounds. So think, you know, in terms of competitors, think Pod, GT100, you know, that type of product. Don't think Helix and Axe FX in terms of price. However, and this is the clever bit, in terms of processing, it has uh, the dual shark 400 megahertz DSP chips in it, which are the same processors that you would get in Axe FX. Yes. Or that, you know. So think kind of top, top of the range processing power, Yeah. but very, very much kind of mid to low price in terms of price tag. Yeah, I mean, um, I, when I put headphones on and took a listen to some of the patches, because yeah. I'm not, you not you guys know, I'm a valve amp, yeah. bread and butter, pedals on the floor, one guitar kind of guy. I'm not a modeling yeah. kind of guy at all. Yeah. But when Tom came over, and despite the fact that he was a nice guy, when I listened to it, I was yeah. like, you know what, I want to get behind this. And it sounds amazing. So, so the bit that I kind of thought was clever is, if you imagine, if you take all these high-end uh, units out there, and I don't want, you know, they're all brilliant. So there's no, I'm not dissing any of them. But I think one of the, 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 the more common uh, criticisms of them would be is that you know, most guitarists probably only scratch the surface of what they can do. Mm. You know, they, they, they'll, they'll, they'll go <coughs> in, they'll find some basic amp models they like, they might tweak them a bit, but they're not gonna go into the sort of the layers of deep editing that you, that you can do on some of these things. And where Atomic have kind of pitched it and, and saved some money is they said, well, look, if like 95% of guitarists aren't going into that sort of deep stuff, why bother having a unit that has all that stuff in it and therefore the price tag that's attached to that? Why not let just make it a unit that has super duper high quality, but you know, with essentially a relatively small amount of knobs and buttons and, and functionality. So we're gonna be doing a, a series of videos with the Atomic Amplifier. I'm gonna be doing uh, one or two with Rob, and then uh, a few on the Andertons channel. So the Andertons channel is gonna focus predominantly on using the amplifier straight into a c computer recording system. So using the DI balanced outputs with all the cabinet you know, an amplifier emulation within there to use as a home recording device. Um, what I'm doing with Rob though in this video is we've plugged into um, a relatively affordable amplifier. I've intentionally gone into the store and just picked something out that, you know, <coughs> was three or 400 pounds. It's a um, great amp though, it's the HT5. It's an HT5 in a two by 10 format. And I've plugged into the, the effects return. So I'm bypassing the EQ and the preamp stage, just going straight into the power amp. Um, so all the reverb, anything that you hear is coming from the Atomic. And just for anyone that, that you might not know about preamp and power amp parts of yeah. an amplifier, very few people do, um, by plugging straight in that way, it means that all of the kind of valve overdrive and effects and yeah. the tone of, of the amp yeah. is, is missed. Yeah. So it's just a clean guitar yeah. signal from the amplifier. Yeah. And, and I wanted to do that because I think because the price of the amplifier is so low, you know, relative to, you know, some of the things it's likely to be compared with, I suspect that people with 
affordable guitar amplifiers and you know anything from you know 150 to five six hundred pounds whatever we'll be thinking what can I buy to really add some mm -hmm. juiciness to my guitar amp tones and um, this is absolutely a contender so what I'm going to do is show you some of the basic amp models and how to add some effects and show you just how simple it is to, to edit so the very first thing that I've done is switch absolutely everything off except the reverb inside the amplifier and this is our bass tone. Do you know what, even just that, with just the reverb pedal, I almost think it's worth mentioning at this point, with the Dual Shark DSP processing that you've got in here, even just using it as a reverb pedal, the processing power of this is competing with the sort of processing power that you get in just about the most expensive reverb unit that you could buy. Absolutely. You know, so yeah. it's like, I'm so impressed. Can you tell? I'm, I'm so impressed. impressed. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, uh, I actually, I've already, if I, this is typically what a screen looks like. It says we're in a preset mode. It's been named twin TK. That means TK is the, um, the initials of the guy who programmed this patch because uh, there are some fairly well-known kind of patch programmers out yeah. there that are sharing their files. Probably because Studio Devil is really well renowned for plugins yep, for recording absolutely. DAW stuff. And... Um, the seven knobs on here are exactly what any guitarist would be familiar with. Gain, master, presence, level, bass, middle, treble, and they adjust the, the tones as in real time. Um, this was clever. The three buttons on the front are anything you want them to be. So if you want to set this up to be like an up and down and a bypass switch if you want to, like a conventional kind of um, guitar effects unit, you can. Or if you want to set this up so that uh, this is like your distortion on and off, this is like your channel A and B button, this is maybe your delay on and off. It's entirely up to you. It's all done within the menu here. Really, really simple to do. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is by pressing this button at the, at the side here, what we call this, the, the, the preset button, that skips through the kind of the different banks or different uh, modules, if you like, that I can I, turn I, on and off. I would say, I don't think, although it's a beautiful colour, I don't think the exterior does justice to the interior. It's a bit like kind of a fairly decent looking car with a Ferrari engine. Yeah, I think, well I think you know, there's absolutely going to be people out there going, when are you going to do a rack version? Yeah. And when are you going to do one with more knobs and buttons? Yeah, 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 yeah. It is, it's uh, full MIDI. So in terms of, um, you know, could you use this with a more sophisticated floor unit? Absolutely you could. You could buy a, you know, the Roland or the Behringer or yeah. any of those kind of MIDI driven floor units. But what I do is I just plug it into my Mac or yeah. an iPad or whatever, and it's so easy to navigate the system and it changes yeah. it immediately and there's loads of downloads. Yeah. It's great. For people, and again, we'll do that when we do the videos with Peter with the DI, um, the all the editing that you would do if you were using it in a, in a home recording system would be on your screen and then it would be yes. way, way simpler. Than anyway, we digress. But for guitar players that are just going to plug it into an amp, this is what you're going to do. So the first thing that you come across is amp model and you can see at the moment it says none and as I twist this knob here, it will pick up some amp models. And what I thought we'd do is, we'll just, we probably don't have time to do all the amp models because I think there's, a, there's, there's 20 or odd in here already and every so often um, Atomic release patch up, you know, upgrades to it, which you can just download for free and there'll be new amp models in there. So the first amp model I'm gonna use is what's called US Clean. Uh, I'm also using uh, the, the sort of the matched cabinet emulation. Some people say if you're using it into an amplifier, why would you have the cabinet emulation on? And that's entirely up to you as to whether you do or you don't. I think the cabinet is such a, uh, an integral part of how an amplifier sounds. I like to use the cabinet emulation in this because you know quite a lot of the like the big bass end of a fender amplifier you know comes yeah. from that sort of cabinet thing and it's worth so, mentioning that you can upload your own um impulse responses, impulse responses yeah. yeah absolutely so i mean if you really really want to get into kind of i mean that again that'll probably become more apparent when we do the the, the desktop stuff so here's a beautiful sounding kind of american clean tone <laughs>
then as we go through them, so the next one is the Deluxe. So this is um, based on a 65 Deluxe. So it'll have a beautiful clean sound, but with a little bit of break up as you begin to drive it. So here we go. That's great. basement so again a bit tighter sounding and probably a little bit more overdriven again so sure what rumble is it sounds a bit ac 30 ish doesn't it so yeah it's that's exactly what it's a... top boost, which is presumably exactly what it says. Just, that, that's, that's nailed, again, most modeling amplifier, the cheaper modeling stuff, when you get to the AC31, that's where you get the sort of instant fail because it doesn't yeah. get that <laughs> raspiness of the yeah. kind of, 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 of a driven mm. AC30. Um, but that's not a bad little, you know, not a bad little tone in a box. lovely sense of room to it space yeah, to it. it's it's not just it's not just an instant oh let's just whack a load again and try and get a big heavy muscle. No, it's absolutely. definitely got that kind of uh more vintage kind of vibe <laughs> You do, what, you do, you do. What doesn't, what doesn't sound better than a Les Paul plugged into a Plexi? You know, it's just... A ghost um, fret plugged into an atomic amplifier. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if it's gone. No, no, no! You, you, I, I'm turning the knobs, man. You're, you're, you're doing the playing. Um, you got a JCM 800. Friedman B. B. Standing for Brown Eye. And I should take this opportunity to tell you all that Andertons uh, became a Friedman dealer yesterday, which in our time is the November the something, isn't it? Yeah. But by the time you watch this video, we may even have some stock. So check it out. Any Thank you. 
sound hasn't it yeah. I've got to keep reminding you guys here this is like 450 quid you know uh, now a Friedman HBE which I'm not even entirely sure what that is but... That's ridiculous! <laughs> can't not shred because it's got that beautiful sound to it. It's got that liquidy kind of tubey yeah. kind of This is when I went, fair play, this is a great unit. That sounds like one. You know, the only thing that, that kind of you, you, you associate that sound with is also a speaker cabinet going crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, of course, we don't have here. We you have hear a, it, but you don't like feel a, it. Yeah, we have a five-watt um, yeah. little guitar amplifier. But here, I suppose it's worth saying that Atomic more. also makes some very well-acclaimed uh, speaker cabinets with... Um, yeah, 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 the CLR series, yeah. absolutely. Leave, so, leave it on that in a minute. I yeah. just want... <laughs> Sound. It's ridiculous. Hot British, I'm guessing similar. <laughs> That's what I had last night after the yeah, Indian. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> this is best demonstrated if I just do one chug and you'll hear the room. You get a sense of the mic'd up cabinet. It's, it's just... They're just incredibly uh, authentic sounding, aren't they? Can you turn yes. off that reverb? Just for a... Oh, what? I'm sorry, man. Just, just for I, this. I can. In fact, if you look at the screen now, you'll see how easy it is to step through. You see, it says reverb active. Now it's reverb bypassed. And there we go. So... <laughs> Sound. 
I should say at this point as well, if you're getting slightly tired of heavily overdriven sounds, uh, one of the things that I've asked Peter to do when he's doing the demos on these is to focus in more on kind of how it can appeal to the sort of the, the bluesy, jazzy kind of dude. Because I think a lot of these things, you know, there's two or three, you know, Fendery kind of amp models in it. And then it just moves on into driven amp models, and and you sort of the, almost the clean sounds are almost overlooked and sort of forgotten. Well, so but, we're but don't do... forget, like for example, if we stand the sound, like yeah. if I tap it and back it off, yeah. They all yeah. clean they all, up. They all act like an amp. Yeah, amp. they respond the SLO. way. Hello, hello. That's my favourite patch on the entire thing, that and the JCM 800. 50, Is what corn it's a corn food, yeah, it's a corn food. But uh, I don't know why they've done it as like a corn thing with a K because I think it's think the it's MK100. <laughs> last four are designed to be doing because they just say power EL34, 6L6, EL84 and so whether it's... Those are patches uh, that, that are just designed just, to emulate... just the, downloaded. The... So if you go to uh, EL34... Is this EL34? Yeah. They go 6L6. Six, six your basic setup and as I said every couple of months or so uh, Amplifier will release new updates and you just hook it up to your computer via USB download the new updates they're all free uh, you can uh, there's a huge community of people sharing their Amplifier patches which of course you can download and stuff so anyway I'm gonna go back to that basic clean sound right at the beginning what do you fact, play? As, as a reminder so here it, I've switched it all off again this was the uh, this is the sound we're getting <laughs> so, That's not it. That every single sound that we've had in this video started with essentially that's what it's layered on top of. Um, so yeah, we'll just get like a clean, the clean sound again. And then you play with the clean sound. Okay, do you want to uh... have a cable? I was only going to say then you're, you're going to be slightly redundant over there, aren't that's you? That's all right. I'm sitting here chilling so, out watching you play. Okay, so here's my US clean sound, which I think again, not just that's nothing. It's just the HD5. That's just the amp. Here's my... And again, anyway, this is just... I'm just going to quickly show you how easy it is to sort of add effects and stuff. So my cabinet, as I said before, is matched. Now, there are some boost um, pedal options. So imagine, you know, putting a pedal in front of your uh, guitar amplifier. So I've got tube screamers, um, overdrive, distortions, or you can hear the noise coming in. So if I want a little tube screamer, which I probably don't, but if I... We, 
uh, yeah, so a bunch of different pedals that I can plug in the front end, all of which I can kind of edit if I want to. So I'm just gonna turn that off for a, a second, uh, bypass. The next bank has effects in it. So this contains things, you know, modulation kind of effects. So uh, choruses, flanges, all that kind of stuff. So I can't tell you, and I hope YouTube puts this across, I can't tell you the difference between the choruses and the reverbs and the delays and stuff in this compared to, you know, like getting a normal 150, 200 pound multi effects yeah, unit. Yeah, I mean, you could they just buy that different. and use it literally as just an effects unit if you want to, it would be head and shoulders over position. They are different gravy. Yeah. Um, and if you're not from the UK and you don't know what different gravy means, it just means a lot better. I had really horrible mm. gravy in America. Did you? White gravy? Yeah. What's that made with then? You uh, actually white gravy, are you sure it was gravy? It had, no, you it didn't was, upset the chef, did you? No, no, it was, <laughs> that was biscuits and white, like a white creamy looking yeah. gravy. Okay, so, you know, flanges. So the next effect in the bank is the, the echo section. Again, fantastic sounds. I turn it on like this uh, and choose an, an echo. So I'm gonna go just a regular digital. There you yeah. Go. Way too much there, so let's just- But you can change all the repeats yeah, yeah. and length. Um, I'll let you know. Heaps and heaps of cool stuff there. Um, let's get rid of that. What's next? Uh, reverb, which we obviously yeah. been using the whole time. They've got a couple of different kinds of reverb, haven't they? As well? Yeah, different types of reverb. Spring, all that kind of vibe. Noise gates. If you're using a heavily driven sound that's generating a lot of background noise, you can gate it, no problem. Now the compressor. That's cool. Um, the very first question you're asked uh, in the menu of compressor options is whereabouts do you want the compressor? Do you want it to emulate like having a pedal on the floor, like a, you know, like a Boss compressor pedal? Uh, or do you want it to have like a post-mix compressor? So do you want it to work almost like a piece of studio mastering uh, style compressor? Which is really, really kind of clever. Um, there's an effects loop on the back of here. So if you have your own, you know, another pedal that you absolutely love, you can dial this into the effects loop, decide on your preset whether so you or put it's on or a, not. So you know, a real cheap screamer through yeah. the 800. Uh, and again, I think you can you can position whereabouts in, in the, the, the chain the loop comes. Now there's a wah-wah, which is kind of weird in that it's, uh, because there's no expression pedal on here, it's very much a cocked wah or an auto wah, those are your sort of options, rather than an actual, you know, a wah that you can trigger. Um, volume, that you can set the, the master volume. You've got EQ settings, um, parametric EQs. You can assign what the foot switches do. So foot switch one, two, and three, essentially saying, I explained that at the beginning of the video. Basically, set the main volume, and it then does that's a lot. It. So that, that, you know, relatively quickly, I, I think what, it, what we've sort of demonstrated is that, you know, the 95% the of guitar players out there who would buy a multi-effects unit will not use anything that isn't, that you know, that, that they can't find in here. Uh, and it's really, as I said, it's just that 5% of people that want to go, they're either looking for way crazy effects or way, way deep editing on certain stuff. But you can get deep into it if you plug it into a computer. Yeah, yeah, well you can get deeper. I still think that that's probably where some of the, the alternatives to this, you know, would argue that theirs has, you know, even more effects and the ability to chain up even crazier patches yeah, of yeah. effects, which is kind of not really the point with, with Amplifier. So, you know, what can I say really? Other well, I mean, you can, if you can plug it through a PA, you can gig with it. If you get one of the powered speakers that they make or an yeah. amplifier, you can plug through the effects loop. You can yeah. gig with it, play with it. Sounds really good as a recording um, station. You plug in, yeah. plug it into your computer. It's, it's brilliant. Got headphones. So you guys want to jam middle of the night, stick some headphones yeah. in. Um, and you plug it straight into a mic pre, wouldn't you? Onto you take that, plug it into a mic pre into a computer, wouldn't you? Yeah, you, well, you've got. Uh, I'm not sure if the USB out. I'll have to double check actually whether the USB output here allows you to record direct into your computer or whether you still need to have some sort of audio interface. 
but you have a, a pair of balanced DI outputs on the back, which we'll show you on the close-up cam, as well as your quarter inch outputs on the side here. And you can use those simultaneously. And again, within one of the menu options, decide, you know, kind of how do you want each of those um, signals to, to be routed? Do you know, do you, do you want uh, the main outputs in stereo and the guitar outputs in mono or, you know, yeah. what, what, what do you want to do? Uh, as I mentioned, it was MIDI. So look, it's a killer little box. It comes in racing red and no other colors. It's fairly affordable. <laughs> it's it's really, very, very clever. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's beyond fairly affordable. Well, uh, whatever. Budget if you, dependent. If you haven't got 450 odd pounds, then of course yeah. it's, you can't afford it. Um, but you know, let's it's be fair. It's worth that just for the effects, yeah. I think. I mean, I, I, I think the reverb is, you know, I mean, that, that just, isn't this a great reverb, you know? <laughs> Whack it on that um, Friedman. I just want That's to see. Right. I, haven't, I haven't really done any of the really dirty stuff. Uh, what am I doing here? I want to go this way. Here we are. Um, Friedman. What, what's Friedman? What the BE? Or yeah, the try that. You mean, and, and it, this might be one of those things that you have to come and try to feel, but there's a certain weird dynamic that makes it feel real. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't hasn't got that kind of very fake feel to it. <laughs> It's an absolute, it's an absolute winner. Um, so excited about working with these guys. Uh, and it's red for Christmas. Yeah, red for Christmas. So <laughs> I'm guessing the only problem with these is going to be keeping up with demand. Um, yeah. Probably. As uh, yes, we we we. Yeah, I'm sure it's a very very small company at the moment. So I'm yeah. guessing in terms of production, they're not going to be making thousands and thousands of these. But look, anywho. There you go. That has been your uh, your first glance, well, second glance if you saw Rob's video of the Atomic Amplifier. And remember, uh, if you're if you're more interested in tones for certain sort of genres, we're doing some sort of playthroughs and stuff on the Anderton's YouTube channel. So I'll put a link to that below as yeah. well. And you can see the lovely Danish Pete um, doing Danish his Pete. thang. He'll look after uh, you. Yeah. So look, that's really it. I've I been think Rob. And I've enjoyed our first day in our new room, and I've been the. Captain. <laughs> Bye. I can't, I can't not shred.